lighting is terrible, but oh well. <laughs> uh, for an interview design. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts yeah. your soul just a little bit. Uh, this is War, a world premiere by Hannah Moscovich. <laughs> Directed by Richard Rose. Set in costume design, Camellia Koo. Lighting design, Rebecca Pitcherek. Composition sound design, Thomas Ryder Payne. Stage manager, Nicola Benedictson. Fight director, John Stead. Lisa Berry played Master Corporal Tanya Young. Ari Cohen played Captain Stephen Hughes. Sergio DeZio played Medic Sergeant Chris Anders. And Ian Lake played Private Johnny Henderson. Military advisor, Peter Kuchurian. I was wondering if you could, uh, maybe we'll start just a bit generally about sure. your approach to design to set and costume, uh, and then we can sort of get a bit more specific to this as war. So when you get a new script, what do you do? Uh, well, I read it. <laughs> um, no, I, re I read it. I read it. So but I don't read it to look for a props list. It's not what I start with. I don't even read it to find out what the room is or what the period is. I just want to read to find out what the story is. And that to me is what I, I stick with for as long as I can before I have to get practical, before I have to start making the props list and the entrances and exits list. Um, I just want to know what's going on for these characters and in what space they're in and then how, how does their world transform. So I'm always trying to dig a little deeper um, and find that kind of stuff to design to. I don't care actually about the room or the period really, ultimately. Um, I know I have to eventually, but that's sort of almost the last stage. And if I've gotten everything else right, the story, the dramaturgy, visual dramaturgy of it right, that stuff falls in so easily. And that's generally how I like to approach any work, whether it's a new piece or an established piece that's been done hundreds of years, you know, um, for example, an opera or, you know, even Shaw plays, not hundreds of years, but you know, uh, it, they're well established. So, um, and then I, I, I tend to be very collaborative. I like having meetings with the whole team, not just me and the director. It's me, the director, costume designer, if I'm not doing costumes, lighting designer as early as possible as early as they want to come in sound designer composer even projection designer of course um when there's one and i uh so that we are all starting to learn the play together as opposed to um you know just being hired when the director knows exactly what they want um i like learning a piece with the whole team and we share information and so all of our meetings are always all together we, nina and i you know, Leah Kino and I um, do this a lot and I've started to carry that through other directors I've worked with. It's just a more fruitful, more uh, collaborative way of working. And yeah, because you're just all learning and championing the same things all at the same time. And that's what you kind of want. And it feels cohesive and it really shows, I find. Um, yeah, we call them designer jams. There's often food involved, you know, pre-COVID times when we could, um, although there's shows and COVID times. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's just, it's also a bonding, a way to bond, especially with the team, you know, maybe you haven't worked with certain collaborators before. It's a way to bring them into, say, an established collaboration, like between Nina and I, and we say if we have, or, and Michelle, and we have a new sound designer come in. We want to bring them into the fold and not feel like they are not part of the team. So it's something we try to do um, on every show. So. Was that... Um also your approach with This Is War, you, you met the script on your own and then it was a collaborative process or, or, or how, did that, uh, how did that set um, come about? Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, I, would, I would have meetings with Richard, but I would also bring, ask Rebecca to come in um, early to those early meetings, especially because This Is War, I put everything in front of all of her lights, like all of the positions of her, for her lighting were blocked by this camouflage netting. And so, of course, if I'm going to do that, I need her input. And you know, Rebecca has great ideas from the very beginning. She's a very narrative lighting designer, a very dramaturgical lighting designer. And that space is unique because I've worked in that space many times. I've worked with Rebecca in that space many, many times. And um, so it was nice to see what else we could do with that space. How do you, how can you mess around with that space? So it's a, you know, it was, it's nice going into space that you know, but then you really find out how, what you can do with it how you can push its limits. Um, but yeah, it was the same thing. It was very collaborative and um, uh, we tried to have our meetings all together. 
I, I want to talk a bit more uh, uh, later on about the extra space because I know you've designed a number of shows there um, yeah. and it's a challenging space in, 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 because of its size, its shape, its peculiarities. This is War, when you first did, did your set design for it, which amazingly you sort of enveloped the audience and the cast, the whole uh, theater was layered with layers of, con layers of, of camouflage. Did that come to you right away or did the set go through different iterations? Oh, uh, I forgot. I've forgotten. Um, I mean, it's I, been a while. It was 2013. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I remember us wanting to, I think Richard came, the only thing he kind of said um, that he knew he wanted was to, as a, a different way to enter the space, to enter their space, character space. So we knew we, knew we didn't want to, either we needed to affect the main entrance that normally audience comes in or use another door. And so we used the other door, we used the back door. Um, or the hallway door as opposed to the shop door. Um, and that meant you had to walk through the space that the actors are then gonna inhabit. And then you have to walk back out through that same space, having experienced everything that these characters have been through. And that was really exciting. Um, so, you know, the audience entrances and exits are the same as the actors entrances and exits. And that was really exciting to try to capture. And so in that space, we could. So it took a little bit of finagling to try to get the the seats that we needed, the seat numbers in, it was a very different configuration that I've never seen that space used in before. It was an L, and I we love the idea that the actors could also all, the actors could also surround the audience. So there's this these like those photos where there's those back corridors, and you only saw those when you entered into the space to get to your seats or when you exited. But the actors hung out back there. So even when they were not on stage, you could see them sort of ghosting in the background or could see their approach to their entrance. That was interesting for us too. What's seen, what's not seen, what's implied, what's not applied. And, um, and of course we wanted to completely envelop the space to make it a space that is unfamiliar. So, you know, when you go into the extra space, people who've been there a lot are like, oh yeah, it's the space, what a charming little space. You see shows here. We wanted to sort of mess with that. So they're starting from their entrance because it disorients them, uh, which we really wanted to do. And then just make you feel like you, this space is unrecognizable. We wanted to get rid of the theater, essentially, even though the, the style of it is, you know, it's just crates and the actors it was very simple otherwise. So in order to build your set, which is a ton of uh, camouflage, was it difficult to yeah. source that? Was that military grade camouflage? Uh, it was as close as we could get um, based on research images that we had. And um, some of it may have been just slightly older issue things. Uh, we had to paint a lot of it because we couldn't get that desert stuff. It sort of came from many different places uh, to try to get the same stuff and the amount that we needed. I, I know from my experience, you know, at Tarragon Previews, that the design team is sitting <laughs> all over the audience, just waiting as the audience trickles in. Do you remember watching the audience encounter this new experience? I do. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty great. <laughs> so because normally I'm sitting in the audience already. I'm sitting in a chair. I've claimed my chair and I'm sitting in there as the audience walks in. And, um, you know, as soon as there's a sort of a tent opening or an opening in the camouflage, uh, so you can hear them chittering like they're walking into the theater, but then they're like, oh, they stop talking about what they had for dinner. And they are actually already talking about the space as they, the minute they walk in the door and they're like, where, where are we going? What do we, you know, and there's ushers there, of course, but they're still, they're already immersed in something's going to happen in this space and something unexpected or something that they are not familiar with. And that was pretty exciting to hear that chatter change so immediately as soon as they walk in the door. And then as they, you know, they walk down those corridors, um, which, you know, Rebecca lit beautifully through there to give it a lot of atmosphere. And then they enter and they'll suddenly find themselves on stage and they're like, oh, you know, and there, there's always a bit of complete disorientation because it is a different door. And we've also messed with what you see the minute you walk in that door, you know, just walk into the theater. You are walking into this world. When people were sitting in their seats, even, you know, a lot of times, on a normal show, there's there, there's a lot of chatter from the from the audience, and it was often quite quiet as the audience walked in already to get to their seats, and they sat in the space, and they were looking around already in this space. They're not chatting about dinner, you know, anymore. They are already in the space, um, ready to sort of see the story, which is really 
Interesting. So it was often oddly kind of quiet before the show. It was 2013. So Canada was only just starting to finally pull out. Mm -hmm. So this is very much in the moment uh, writing. Yes. So I imagine the research must have been very detailed. Can you uh, yeah, we, ha we had to be because it's such a real, these are real people or, you know, based on or could be based on real people, but it's a real event, obviously, that Canadians are involved in. And so it's important to get those details right. Um, um, because you want to honor that too. You want to honor um, the traditions of military, of Canadian military, right? So it's, it's important to get those details as accurate as we could. It didn't feel right to do a metaphor of the uniform or to do a cost, like a super costumey version of the uniform. It was actually better served the play and the characters to be as accurate as we could. Uh, we had a consultant um, who had done two tours in, um, in the Canadian army in Afghanistan. And uh, he was really great. He talked a lot about PTSD, what he had gone through, his friends, that kind of thing. I'd had, you know, we'd had very good uh, conversations. I think Hannah also had conversations with him separately and he came in to talk with the actors, even just in everyday life, what it would be like. And that was great for him. He was great telling us about what happens between missions when there's not a lot to do the soldiers aren't doing a lot boredom as well and what that is um i had one with him just talking about the details of the uniform and what everything meant um why things go to a certain place what that what those patches mean and you know there is tradition in those there is ceremony in those as well uh it, it's kind of also a ritual right the military has a lot of its own ritual military um tradition so um, but it was important to me to get that right and not try to do and not do a fake version um, as much as we could. Some of it we did have to build because you can't actually get this legally. We can't get that stuff. Um, uh, but we still tried to be as accurate as possible. So that he was a big part of our research. I did photo research as well. Of course, I read Christine Blatchford's book. <laughs> I think when she went there um, just to get a context of what it was like as a civilian, what it's like to be there. Even having, you know, a fight director come in and teach the actors how to hold the guns properly, like they knew what they were doing. You know, actors are so great that you give them something and they can really make something of it in surprising ways, which I really love. And so that's where we discovered actually that the actors could be present in the room even when they were not on stage. It was through their, their you know, their ideas about that. Um, uh, you know, people lurking in sort of the shadows of it in the second or even third layer um and even how they how we saw their their entrances before they actually entered the space um you know they were so great at making all that work and um and i didn't give them anything else i mean the play doesn't ask for it the play doesn't didn't like hannah was very specific about not wanting a lot of scenery um it was really focused on the conversations on the on what they were saying and what they were trying to convey to each other that I mean I, I would think that that's quite vulnerable for an actor I haven't given them anything to play with other than a couple of things to sit on and a flashlight and their gear they made the most of their gear though they loved all their and they all wanted it they all wanted as much of the real weight as possible and in terms of costumes um, so, you know, they had stuff to play with, but because I didn't give them anything else in the set, but power to them, they were so great at inhabiting that space and filling the space. They had those transitions, right? You read the script and it it, it jumps from an interview situation to a flashback, to being in the mess, yeah. to being outside yeah. in the camp, to being in a ditch in a combat situation on the in the blink of an eye. Yeah. And they just have to do that. I, I presume with, you, you talked about Rebecca Pitcherek, Rebecca Pitcherek's uh, light, lighting. I presume that that helps with those transitions. But otherwise, oh, it's just absolutely. the actors. It's just the actors and Hannah's writing that really make those transitions clear. It didn't need big scene change. That would have actually done all of, you know, both Hannah and the actors a disservice um, if we had to deal with major big scene changes every, you know, because it is, it was, it was quite fast, those transitions. And Rebecca's lighting did definitely help. What she was able to do with, with, you know, with everything in her way was beautiful. And she used it to her advantage in such a beautiful way. And, um, and this, the first, the premiere in 2013 did ended up, it toured to a big Prairie Theatre Exchange. Uh, did the same set go with it? Uh, yes, as much as possible. Yeah. 
it was interesting because uh, Winnipeg, the space is very, very different, much larger than the extra space. Extra space is so very unique to the extra space. So when we were getting the camouflage netting, um, I don't know if they got, I think they ended up getting more locally because the theater was that much bigger and they, and they really wanted to, so they had enough to sort of do most of the stage. They, we tried to do the same thing. I didn't go on tour and I, they sent me a picture, it was pretty cool. They still tried to wrap the space in the same way and having those double layers. And then they, they got more to try to bring as much of it out over and around the audience as possible. We couldn't do the whole theater, but enough to come in to, to pass you know, the cross line. To, to, try to, to try to get as much of them as possible. Um, and apparently it was, it, was, uh, it was brilliant there, so. Um, you talked a bit about the extra space. It's a, a pretty small space uh, yeah. compared to, to a lot of other venues. Uh, and you've done a lot of work there. I know uh, Bashir Lazar was in the extra space, right? In East of Berlin yeah. um, in the Sankofa trilogy. Yeah. Uh, I know you, you've also worked a lot in the main space at Tarragon. Um, uh, you know, carried away, Wormwood, the message. Yep. Um, what, uh, can you tell me about uh, both of those spaces, but the extra space in particular, what it's like for you working there? Uh, I haven't worked there in ages and I miss it um, because I really got to know it so well, as much as some of it can be annoying. Um, and, you know, I love working in spaces that are difficult <laughs> and that I get to work with repeatedly because then I get to really, you know, I get to eventually by the time, you know, the second show, I'm like, okay, how else can I mess around with this space? How can I subvert the space because it's, but because it's so hard, difficult. And, um, you know, I've been very lucky each time. Uh, somehow we've always found a way for the play to sit so well in that space. Um, I actually like it better than the main space. The main space has its own issues, which drive me crazy. And, you know, I'm still learning how to, mess around there but um i find it much harder to do in the main stage i haven't i don't i don't know yet if i've been like uh if i've really cracked that space yet the extra space i feel like i've been able to crack it new in on so many shows it's why so it's why it's still one of my favorite spaces um you know learning what we can do with the audience and it's so great that tarragon will let us move the audience seats around a lot of theaters won't let you um, you have to, of course, you have to work that into our budget, but it's so great that they are flexible with that if it makes the space uh, charged with a particular energy that fits the play. And that's what I love. I love including how an audience watches a piece into the design, especially with such a tiny space, especially when it's not a cross space. I really want to use that to my advantage in the design. And, and it, it seems to always work really well for extra space. <laughs> so. Are there other shows that you've done there that are, are favorite designs or that you're particularly proud of something you did? Uh, Easter Berlin is a, is a top favorite for sure. You know, we were able to really use that alcove space and come right out of it. Like we shot out of that like a rocket because the way the set was angled and it really brought, you know, when Rudy's talking to the audience, he's in your face. He's smoking in your face. And you know, when you could smoke in the theater and um, there was something great about that the way, and also Hannah's writing is just so, it's just so brilliant that it, I wanna support that as much as possible. I don't wanna take away from that at all. I wanna, she says so much and so little. So I know I don't have to do a lot in the space. And um, yeah, that's a favorite. That also toured to different spaces that were not like the extra space, but they made it work. Um, and uh, Sankofa truly was a lot of fun because I think from, I guess, I think that was after This Is War, right? I don't know. <laughs> Sankofa Trilogy, I did it again, to, this time to Michelle Ramsey, where I put, um, we, this tree grew out of the alcove and, and spread all the way out and over the audience and then down some of the walls. And again, the, all these the branches were just made out of twisted cotton but they were all in the way of lighting. And so, you know, there's some negotiations where we, you know, you pull some holes open to get some clear shots, but otherwise, again, she, she was able to make the most of it and um, really have some surprising lighting through, through the tree. And she lit that beautifully. That was a lot of fun because um, it was just the black box otherwise. And then the only thing in there was this white tree, this cotton tree and Debbie, who she can fill a space all by herself. I don't need to put anything in that space, but um, it was just nice. And I have that up and over the audience. So um, that was my phase where I just wanted to like 
wrap any theater I was going into. Um, but it makes such a big difference to, to change audience perception of a space when they when they walk in. I love doing that. Yeah, I think of that alcove and I honestly, I feel like a lot of audience members who come regularly to the Tarragon don't even know that there's that strange alcove, alcove that's often off to the side of a typical proscenium in the extra space. Yeah. Um, so it's amazing to make <laughs> use of it. Uh, although Sankofa was actually before, I just looked it up, it was before. Oh, really? Oh, so you, okay. you, you'd be torturing <laughs> lighting designers for a while at that point. There we go. <laughs> There we go. I knew one of them I'd learned that I could do it, that I was allowed to do that. So then I think that's what happened. Yeah. Go there if you want to, but I am curious how you're taking a pause. I'm taking a pause. We're hanging, our, our sector is taking a pause. People are still making stuff happen, but it's hard. We, we don't, we miss that liveness. Um, I'm just wondering yes. uh, what you're missing most about the theater right now. Mm, so much. I miss, I miss the collaborators. I miss my tribe, the people I work with. And, you know, when I was starting out, I always looked forward to, you know, you'd meet more senior artists and they'd be like, oh, I've been, he, he, you know, so-and-so and I have been working together for 10 years, 20 years. And I remember always looking forward to that. And I'm at that place now where I'm like, I have collaborators I've been working with for, you know, 15 to 20 years and doing shows with them, even though I go off and do other shows, I come back, it's like coming home and it's, those are my people. And, you know, there's, I miss creating something from nothing with, with, with people, with other people in the same room and, you know, in front of a model and all of us sticking our hands in and sitting next to each other, you know, side by side. And just, I miss being in rehearsal. I miss collaborating with the shops. I miss sort of every aspect of it right now. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we'll get back to it. That may, that may be a little heart sick, but we will get back to our collaborators yes. in time. Yes. Yeah, I'm Thank looking you so forward much. to it. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Me too. Thank you, Cami. It's been Thank wonderful you. to talk to you and just get a tiny insight into your process. Um, you. And I look forward to when we get to work together again soon. Me too. Me too, definitely. <laughs>